All right, welcome back. So today we are going to be looking at using your um, laser blades and what's a good build to use them and other applications for this. Just let me real quick buy a um, a head. That's a cheap one, light one. Is what I is what I need. Um, and let's go change this because this head that is equipped right now, the HD one, is uh, very good for finishing the storyline because it allows you to not equip a radar on the back slot. So that's less energy, less drain, less weight on your core. It's fairly expensive, but you can get it pretty pretty early in the game. And let's use this one instead. So wait, it's heavier. 156, 161. Ah, oh, but it has a larger train. Well, but it's lighter and that's the point right now. Anyways, well, here's the build. It's a build that is used exclusively for blading uh, these types of builds <coughs> are recommended for uh pvp playing against a live player you can use them against the computer if you like a challenge it's going to teach you uh, by force how to feather how to uh, circle straight using the boost and you're going to have to keep an eye on energy consumption now this particular build also depends on using well the lightest parts that you can find on the shop uh, you're not going to be needing a lot of weight carrying on the legs so you choose the legs with the highest uh, speed and stability and in the later games turning ability you have to look that look for that um and later games in the series over time i think it starts in armored core uh, silent line or nexus you can actually equip blades on both hands and you don't have to rely on a handgun anymore now why if we're going to be using blades why do we keep a weapon equipped in the right hand because if you don't have a weapon equipped then you don't get the targeting radical and a handgun is way lighter than any of the machine guns and you're really not going to be using the pistol the principle behind these builds is to go hard and fast on top of the enemy as fast as possible inside of the match and just blaze away it has some tricks. I'm not very good at it, but I'm going to try to teach you how to do it. The generator has to be a, the lightest one you can equip with the largest energy um, pool available and also a fairly large output because you want energy to regenerate fast. You are dropping weight to keep yourself mobile and you achieve that by having a less total weight than what your legs can carry but also the generator has to give you a ton of output so you can regenerate energy fast also a, a small red line you can go with pretty much any um, any fire control system that is wide or a standard but i will recommend a fast one in armor core one is not very important but in later games a, a fast one that has a lot of blade tracking that's a stat that they're going to start adding in the games so you have to prepare for that i will train with last raven or armored core for answer because we don't know what kind of gameplay Armored Core 6 is going to have. But, but the principles are the same 
among all games and um, when you can equip two blades they already have this tracking stat so you don't so you can actually equip blades on the right hand and the left hand and you can combo your moves but energy management is way more difficult even in four answer you can run out of energy for quick boosting if you're using the heaviest hitting blades and the fastest booster even if it has a high drain that's why you want to uh, build with a high regeneration of energy because you need to move fast quick even if it consumes a lot of energy you are not going to be flying with this you're not going to be fighting in the air so let's go first into the ac test so you get the hang of it uh, these uh, cores also have the problem that pretty much any weapon that hits them makes them fly way longer but you want a wide uh, fire control system that so that the tracking in the first game is automatic if the target is in the air you're going to fly towards them and if you hit them in the air with the blade you do double damage so most of the time this means that you're going to be killing uh, light armored cores with just one hit middle waves with maybe one hit some of the builds some other build with two or at most three swipes and tank threads and heavy parts you're going to be needing between three and six blades or three or four blades if it's in the air you can see that the blade tracks and that's the problem with Alvar Core 1 that the best blade is the Moonlight it has the longest range it has the best tracking and it also has the most power with a fairly low energy consumption this is the heaviest blade that you can actually buy in the store it has good heating but very poor tracking and it also consumes a lot of energy more than the moonlight and that's the thing if the enemy is flying and you have a green lock the blade is going to auto boost you because you boost when you blade it's going to out of boost you towards the enemy that's what you have to abuse it's way more difficult when you try to do that with a light player to simulate how this works in pvp <coughs> there is a mission that gives you a uh, Colosseum battle versus in a single AI that you are always going to be at the disadvantage this core uh, in this particular mission you find you fight this core twice during the storyline this is actually him looking for revenge because you already defeated him and if you're using a blade build you're going to have a big disadvantage because this guy has the machine gun uh, back weapon and it knocks you off very very easily and also does a lot of damage and this guy isn't shy about blading either so what you're going to practice here is quick turning and try to get behind the opponent while you dodge and the part that makes the fight versus ai very easy is that you can also knock them and stone lock them with the blade so this fight you can consider a win if you finish with maybe more than 75 percent of your initial armor points that's your health bar that's a big number on the top left of the screen and 
um, your backup weapon, which is the pistol, helps stone locking these guys because it actually hits very, very hard. But the point is, try to blade as much as possible, get comfortable with tracking the enemy, learn how to change directions mid-flight. Uh, that, was, that was actually a very good, result, very good result. I didn't lose a lot of money. If, if you spend uh, more than half your money on repairs alone in a mission, that means that you have to practice dodging way more. Let's give it another try. Try to force that guy into a stone lock with a pistol and then stone lock him with a blade. It's way harder versus tracks. Now, this type of build is very, very difficult to play in the story mode. Because usually you have to fight uh, 20, 30 uh, small enemies. You can blade those. But if they are very fast moving, it's going to be very difficult for you. So you can use this particular mission. After you finish the game, you can select every mission. If you really want to commit to learning how to blade, this is a very good uh, mission to try. Because that guy excels at middle range, so you have to learn how to close the distance. And keep him in front of you. Uh, for example, that's the machine gun stone locking me. My core is too light to actually uh, get out of that. So, the previous one was better for me as a player. That's a stone lock. But since the machine gun fire can make you uh, recoil and... Um, moves you around in the air if it hits you in the air it makes you jump faster higher this is a very good mission to practice this and as you can see doesn't mean there are better ways to to defeat this mission but the point is learning how to dodge machine gun fire because that's going to be a big problem for your core in this particular build uh, you don't have to learn the name of the pieces. You just have to look for low weight, low energy consumption. You have to look for the uh, fastest booster and the uh, quickest legs, the legs that have better mobility for blading to work. You can try some other types of missions. For example, this one. This one is actually good for dodging and um, learning how to blade mid-jump because you also have to protect uh, course. and learning the heat frame of the swords. Different swords have different heat frames and the blade motion also changes depending on the type of leg that you have equipped. So with bipedals that are light, this is uh, fairly easy to do because you have a very fast quick turning in even in the air. And since this, since this mission is also quite long and has a lot of enemies, you can practice um, energy management too. Just doesn't have to be perfect at first. It's a very hard skill to learn. I myself don't... Uh, I prefer middle range in armor core and this type of or build forces you to go into close range
so it helps a lot to practice dodging, weaving around, using the auto tracking for the blade. And this is why I told you the moon blade, the moonlight blade is the best for trying this build, even though it has a fairly large uh, energy drain for sword. And also to learn to land correctly while moving side to side and trying to dodge fire. Like I told you, I'm not very good at this. It's not a style of play that I enjoy or that I actually enjoy. I recognize and acknowledge that it's very, very satisfying when you can learn, when, when you learn to do this on command. Because there's a, there's a time in the jump where you're not going to miss and you're going to do double damage. Good, I'm dead. You have to learn that you are very fragile. Like in actual armor points, there's not much of a difference with a middleweight. Um, a, a standard middleweight is around 8,000 to 9,000 AP, but that's on the heavier side. And the lightest I have been able to go is maybe around uh, 74. Hundred, and that's pretty much the lowest you can do your you are going to have crap defense so you have to make use of your mobility um and some lightweight parts have very high energy consumption so that's why you have to choose the lightest parts that you can equip that also have the lowest energy consumption so you can boost around for long periods of time and once you let go at the top of your arc while boosting and jumping when you let go energy regenerates as if you were standing still on the ground but while still moving so that's very important these are very important skills to learn because they work for the whole franchise now again if you like these type of videos if they are helpful for you just leave a like subscribe to the channel ring on that bell so you know when i'm uploading new material and see you around see you next time